Today we're going to focus on another aspect of soil building science. And we're going to talk about what is a dynamic accumulator. Why do you want them in your garden? What do they do? How do they build soil? So stick around and let's get into the science. Okay, first we need to understand how soil is made if we're going to make soil. All plants will live in the summer season, create photosynthesis, manufacture leaves from the roots in the soil, and then at the end of the season they'll die back, they'll go to seed, and all that nutrient from the leaves will fall down as those leaves fall and as the, the annuals die for the season, and come into contact with the soil. This apple tree is in the process of taking all the energy from the leaves, putting it into the roots, and that'll make the leaves turn brown, and then the leaves get brittle and fall down onto the soils. Microorganisms in the soils will then consume these leaves and turn it into humic fulvic acid, other macronutrients that are inside the leaves, and this is how we grow our soil. And it's this leaf fall constantly coming down onto the soil that builds soils from the top. Leaves fall down, the old soils get below that, and soil is built up and up and up. What that means is over time, the nutrients that are in the top soil, although they're being extracted from the plants, they're also getting pushed further and further down and the plants that exist in the topsoil layer, they're slowly going to lose their ability to access those nutrients. Those nutrients are going to get pushed further and further down until volcanic activity brings them back up. So we're going to be that volcano with a dynamic accumulator. All plants will take from the soil the things that they want to put into the plant. For tomatoes, it might be calcium, for other plants it might be vitamin C and all the micronutrients that make up vitamin C and this comfrey plant is taking up various macronutrients that are inside of its leaves. I'm going to link below to a research article that discusses the nutrients inside of comfrey tea leaves. And this happens for every single plant in the world. This Queen Anne's lace here benefited my garden in the spring by being a and a beneficial insect attractor. It attracts green lacewings and ladybugs and all sorts of wonderful pollinators and insect predators. At the end of the season, it will die and all that matter ends up on the ground. And what is inside the leaves is gonna end up in the topsoil. And what's inside the leaves came from the root zone. This is the very important difference that we need to understand. Okay, so at first you might think that whatever's in the leaves came from the topsoil and when it dies back it returns to the topsoil, so there's no net benefit. But that's kind of close and that's only accurate if the actual roots are in the topsoil. So for plants that have deeper roots and drive very, very deep tap roots down, they will actually access nutrients from soils that are well below the actual topsoil layer they'll bring them up into the leaves, like that's just how plants work. And then when they die back in the fall, they'll deposit that nutrient back down, not down into the deep subsoil, so into the topsoil, the fertile layer of your food forest. So although all plants will biodynamically accumulate nutrients that they want and that they use to grow their leaves and their fruit, we assign a special name to a specific group of plants who we call dynamic accumulators, dynamic nutrient accumulators. And the reason why we do is because it's just, it just so happens that these plants accumulate not only a wide range of nutrients, but also typically very important nutrients for your plants, as well as in large quantities. And they do it from deep down into the subsoils where the, it's not competing with the other plants for nutrients. This is really important for something like strawberries, if you have a strawberry patch and you plant a shallow rooted dynamic accumulator, that dynamic accumulator is going to fight with the strawberries for the same nutrients in the topsoil. But if you plant shallow rooted strawberry plants with a deep tap rooted nutrient accumulator, 
they're not competing for nutrients in the same way and the dynamic accumulator is actually helping the strawberries by accessing nutrients that would end up not being available to the strawberry, bringing it up to the leaves, and then you put the leaves down in compost or just directly down onto the soil. Now a lot of plants will actually do that nutrient dredging function with a deep tap root, but not all plants are created equal. Some do it better than others, and my favorite plant in the world for doing this function is comfrey. Now I encourage everybody to go pop open that article and check out the table on the nutrient accumulation of the various plants. It also looks at pigweed and water hyacinth, which aren't deep tap rooted nutrient accumulators, but they are nutrient accumulators. It also compares them to various animal manures for a base load reference. Now, comfrey has tremendous amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And phosphorus in particular is extremely important because most soils these days are now depleted in phosphorus. Critical, critical element to have a nutrient accumulator of. It also has tremendous amounts of calcium, sulfur, magnesium, and zinc, which are very, very useful elements for plants. So here we're in a guild with an apple as the main overstory tree, raspberries as the bush layer, um, currants as the bush layer. We have comfrey acting as the dynamic accumulator in this guild, uh, creeping charlie as a beneficial insect ground cover, strawberries as an edible ground cover, clover as a nitrogen fixing ground cover, perennial kale as a rabbit deterrent, onions and garlic as aromatic confusers. And in this way, every single plant is performing a function and the whole integrated system, all aggregated together, is a very, very dynamic and robust small little cluster of plants called a guild. Comfrey in this guild, if you could see underneath the soil level, is digging a deep taproot straight down. And it's not competing that much. It does still have some lateral roots, but it has a mega deep taproot. And we're actually gonna dig one up right now and I'm gonna show you the roots of this thing. Okay, now digging this comfrey plant up is gonna be a significant amount of soil disturbance and root severance. So I don't wanna do it necessarily here to show you. I don't mind propagating comfrey plants, but I like to do it in areas where I don't really mind disturbing the soil as much. So we'll take maybe one of these edge plants out of the uh, bottom of this swale here and we'll dig this up. All right, so forgive the weird shot. I have this resting on a tiny little branch of a tree because I don't have a tripod. <laughs> Okay, now, believe it or not, this is a one-year-old plant, and I want to show you the roots on this thing. This is actually a lateral root, and this is the size of many advanced tree-sized roots. This here is another lateral root. The actual tap root, I cracked off because I couldn't even get it. Look at the size of that thing in circumference. Do you see this? And that thing was going straight down into the soil. So picture that plant like that. And that root is still this big at soil level and is going straight down into the soil, mining nutrient from down there, sending off lateral roots at every elevation as well. Now because comfrey also spreads via root um, fragments, I actually just made about 50 comfrey plants. So every single area where I cut some of these, there was other roots. All of those roots will send shoots up in the future. So this here led to a whole bunch of plants, really strong plants probably, will come up from this root fragment. I can take little fragments this size, ideally a little larger, maybe this size, and 
I can put them in the ground. You want to put them oriented roughly the way that the root was oriented. So if this root was kind of going down in, then you want to have the root like at least that like this way. If you don't know, then you could always put the root upside down. What the plant will do is try to grow out and it'll grow and up. The plants are pretty smart or you can put them sideways in it. Now I already have some comfrey there, but I talked about in another video, I want to get more comfrey here on this section of the border. So I will just pull away the chop and drop. I will dig this in and we will just put that in there and I'll get a comfrey plant there. And I actually want them fairly, um, fairly thick on this area. So I will take a bunch more root cuttings and I'm gonna put comfrey every couple inches apart in this hill and it'll act as nutrient accumulators and it'll also act as um, a shade barrier for the grasses trying to creep into my garden here. And I wanna have it roughly every three inches when I'm trying to make a border. You can see here, I've got some comfrey already from a root fragment planted earlier this year. And we've got strawberries growing right next to it. I have no problem putting comfrey right next to strawberries. Jam that in the ground. And I want a wall of comfrey in this area to act as a barrier for the grasses and dynamic accumulators for the plants in, in that wall drilling deep tap roots, bringing those subsoil nutrients up, putting them in the leaves. And then especially on a border, what I can do is actually come by and step on all these comfrey plants and put them down into the walkways. And then it'll extend that grass barrier action because it'll smother the grasses out on the edge and the new leaves will come up and come up over those and it'll um, smother the grasses with sun and with, um, direct mulching. Now this comfrey is accumulating nutrients in its leaves and it's not really competing like I said for the raspberries in this guild and the raspberries look incredible and delicious. Oh man. So what we do in order to return that nutrient back into the soil is we come by and we chop it and we cut it down and then we lay it down. So we can also just step on it and crush it down and it will come back up. It will regrow and these leaves are now going to decompose and the soil microbiology is going to and the worms will come up at night and drag them down into the soils. They'll de digest it, they'll decompose it, and they'll send it back out their back ends as fertile black gold for the whole entire system. And remember what my saying is, stop focusing on growing plants. Grow soil and the plants will come as a natural consequence of having extremely fertile topsoil. What that means practically is when I see a plant struggling, I can take two actions. I can take a short-term action and try to fertilize it and fix it for this year, but that doesn't solve the problem of why that plant is struggling. Or I can take a, well, and or, I guess, I can take a long-term action and I can add a dynamic accumulator as a companion plant to it, like this comfrey to the peach, and hascaps and asparagus and sea buckthorn and wonderful little polyculture guild with onions and garlic and strawberries and clover. So I can take... I can plant dynamic accumulators as companion plants all throughout my garden. They'll increase the fertility of the area provided, like even if I don't chop and drop them, their natural dieback in the fall will do it all on its own. But I can accelerate the process by chopping and dropping it, causing a regrowth and causing that plant to dynamically accumulate, go through its phase maybe three or four times in a season. So I can take a long-term approach like that or I can go around fertilizing. I am always a fan of systematically using your time to do long-term smart approaches to soil building and increasing your fertility in a long-term vision. So let's talk about the invasiveness of comfrey. 
because a normal wild comfrey can be pretty invasive. It's got a super, super deep tap root. So when I'm digging that thing up and I'm severing any of the roots, it's there forever. And you saw how far down I dug. Uh, some comfrey has been known to go like 50 plus feet down really really deep tap root so you're never getting it out even with an excavator you're not getting it out it'll come back so when you're planting comfrey make sure that it's somewhere that you want it there forever now you can control it by chopping it constantly and eventually it will um, lose its energy in the roots and it'll just die so that way to get rid of it is just to constantly harvest it like over harvest it and you will kill it now, comfrey can be invasive, but there are sterile versions that have been created in the laboratory um, from just genetic selection, and they're seed sterile. So these aren't genetic uh, manipulation, they're just genetic selection, saving different seeds. They're actually uh, sterile from seed. So, for example, Bocking 4, Bocking 14, um, they're from a laboratory in Bocking, England, and they're actually sterile from seed. So all of my comfrey, all the comfrey that I gave my father-in-law Poppy, all the comfrey that I gave my sister-in-law Sherry at Gardening in the North, um, they're all sterile versions of comfrey, so they won't spread from seed. Literally the only way that it can spread is if you sever the roots. So if you don't sever the roots, it won't spread. Actually going to just start ripping the leaves off and throwing them on the ground. This is a way of investing in your future in your garden. Stop focusing on what amendments do I need to add to this tomato plant because it's struggling. Start thinking about what additions can I make to my system so that my system is more fertile next year and on year 10 from now. So thanks for watching. Keep building that soil. Spread the word of this channel. If you like this, help grow this channel. If you like the content that I produce and you want me to keep making it, you want me to see more and more, help grow this channel. Comment below, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Happy gardening, friends.